Hi, my name is Mike. I'm from homeshipping.com. Today we're going to show you how to load two cars into a 40-foot container. Uh, the first thing that we have to make sure is to, to make sure that the documentation are proper. So your first step is to call an FMC company, a Federal Maritime Commission company, and to make sure that you get a booking for your car. Having done that, you have to make sure that you have the titles, the original titles, because the U.S. Customs will require you to have the original titles to validate. And then after that, you need to send those U the original titles to the company for them to be validated by, by the U.S. Customs. Once these titles are validated by the U.S. Customs, then you proceed into the loading of the car. So supposedly you're at home and you want to load your car inside the container. The first thing that you need to know that the containers are very high up the ground. So you have to have a dock high place to drive your car inside the container over here. Now many, many of you may not have a dock high place, so what you do is you bring like a tow truck. A tow truck is as high as a container, and then you place the tow truck over here to drive the car inside the container. Okay, the purpose of loading the car properly inside the container is to make sure that the car does not move around the front and back, and does not bounce, and it does not move sideways because obviously the car is going to go through being picked up by the trucker, going to the port, on the ship, with the crane, and so on and so on forth. There's a lot of motion, there's a lot of... What we're going to do is we want to find out uh, what equipment do we need uh, in order for us to properly uh, pack and load this car inside the container. So the first thing that we need is wood. Uh, two by fours is really all you need for, for regular cars. Where do you buy the two by fours at Home Depot? In fact, all the stuff that I'm going to mention to you is at Home Depot. The things that you need is table saw, such as the one over there. You obviously need a compressor, 2.5 horsepower or more. You need a uh, nail gun, which is all the way inside over there. We'll show you about it. And then you need the, obviously the holes and the nails. Now obviously many of you may not have those equipment, so the proper thing is to get, the most important thing is the wood. You can cut the wood with a hand saw, and you could use a hammer and a nail to use instead of the nail gun. Now we're going to go inside and show you why is it so important to properly load the car. The most important thing is to make sure that you have the pieces of wood underneath the car. And so in this case, we're just going to work I'm just stacking them up like that, but in a little bit, Terry's going to nail each piece of wood to the floor so that way the car is not going to move backward. The same thing is going to happen on all four wheels. At the same time, we're going to put some pieces of wood on the side like so. And then those pieces of wood are going to protect the car from going side to side. Lastly, we're going to use this strap, which is a nylon strap, a five inch nylon strap, to strap the car and from the wheels, all from the axle chassis, to hold the car tight to the, to the uh, ground of the, uh, uh, we're going to tie it right through these, and then hook them up and across, and then make sure that the car is nice and tight. Right over here, if you notice, we put two pieces of wood right and nailed to the ground. That way the car is not going to move anywhere. And then we supported that piece of wood with another piece of wood nailed to the ground. The ground of the container is wood, so you can nail against it. And right over here, if you can see the mountain of little woods that basically stacked up against the wheel so it's not going to go anywhere. And again, supported by a long uh, piece of 2 by 4 On the strap, you put one end of the strap on the hook that comes on the container and you put the other end of the strap on the other hook. And what you do is you crisscross the strap on the wheel. So you put one end to it and you just crisscross it with another. You put it in the hatchet and then you basically just watch what tear is doing right now. You actually tighten it up. Get as much as possible. You don't want to tighten it too much, but you want it nice and stuck to the ground. And then that way, this car is not going to bounce. So any type, if there's a shock absorber, if you're going over whatever, if it's being held with the crane, this car is not going to go anywhere because it's just not going to bounce. And that's it. Some of the things that we have to keep in mind that 
the, uh, when you bring the car in, inside the container, you need to make sure that it's out of gasoline. So you want to siphon as much gas as possible, just barely enough to go inside the, uh, the container. One. The other thing that we need to do is to disconnect the battery. After the car is driven inside the container, you want to make sure that the hood is still open and you want to make sure that you disconnect the battery before you finalize the procedure.